Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. As you can see, the mountain project is progressing nicely. I've got myself a little forest of trees developing on the lower slopes here and we're going to add a few more details to the tops of these mountains as well. Been working on this off and on, mostly on live streams, but today I think we're going to do a little bit of work on the interior of the mountain leading up to the elevator which if you haven't seen the previous videos related to this we actually have a redstone powered lift platform which is currently kind of broken because i activated it while i was working on this top area of the mountain and the slime blocks encountered some stuff they couldn't push and that led to the platform being kind of broken up like this. Some of it managed to return to the base of the mountain, some of it unfortunately got left up here. So I'm going to take this entire thing down and rebuild it with the idea that people are actually going to be able to get to this ski lift from the outside of the mountain because in practical Minecraft terms it's pretty difficult if not impossible to make a redstone flying machine that flies diagonally so we can't really simulate the average ski lift not to mention the fact that ski lifts in real life would probably change angles and have a lot more kind of mechanical components required in making sure they got up to the top part of a mountain so we're probably going to build an aesthetic one of those at some point in the future but for now I want you to be able to access the center of the mountain where you can get a straightforward vertical lift up to the top of that slope. And that is going to require some sort of entrance down here, which I've thrown around a couple of ideas for in the past. And I think I'm actually going to have to take down a couple of these trees because I want a cave entrance here and a really nice picturesque crystal cave to take us to the center of the mountain. So I'm actually going to take these trees down, much as I have painstakingly built a few of these recently. I'm thinking we'll probably take a couple of these down, and we're going to build a little passageway into the center of the mountain through a crystal cave. I like this idea, and it's going to allow us to add a pop of color and a little bit of interest to this area. Not to mention, it's going to allow us to work with some of the ore blocks that I recently speed mined while I was mining to get some resources for this mountain with a haste to beacon. I pulled a bunch of ore blocks out of the ground. And so today, we're going to be doing a kind of a an interesting tutorial on how to use ore blocks for aesthetic builds when you're not using them to get resources they are perfectly valid building blocks in themselves and I think we can incorporate them into some of these crystals pretty effectively. In fact I'm thinking maybe just taking down that one tree might have been enough although yeah you know what I think we are going to take down a second one to one side as well because I really want this cave entrance to seem kind of large and while it might seem large up close from a distance there's really not a whole lot of space there. It's the kind of thing that we're going to have a line going to as though people will actually queue up to get onto the lift to get taken up the mountain. So yeah we're going to need a little bit more space. Let's take this tree here down as well. That's looking a little bit more like it. I think we can probably adjust that tree a little bit there but we definitely need to create a kind of cave entrance. So let me grab a few resources for this. I've mostly been carrying leaves and tree trunk around with me so I've got a bunch of like snow and snow blocks and spruce leaves and logs and that kind of stuff. I will need to grab a bunch of stone for this which we might still have some inside the mountain in the cobble generator that I've been using to smelt all the stone we used to build the mountain in the first place. And we did have a little bit lying around in some of the chests around here as well so we're actually going to take down some sections of the mountain here and dig our way through until yep there we go we should have nice easy access to the cobblestone generator of course the path is going to have to go past that and over there to you can see that scaffold in the distance and the remains of the redstone flying machine we're going to have to make a path that leads over there and thankfully most of that is lit up right now despite the spooky noises we might see a couple of mobs generating further up there on those ledges but i have lit those up as well a bunch of the interior of the mountain still remains unlit but maybe we can do something about that if not the crystal cave is going to be a largely enclosed and lit space which should just transfer us directly over to there without having to worry about all of this stuff on the outside. We're going to conceal the fact that there is this enormous cavern behind it. But let's open this out a little bit more since it seems safe to do so. And I'd say that seems like an adequate amount of space to build outwards from and establish the start of a cave tunnel. Like I said, we're going to have to shift this tree up a couple of blocks maybe i'll just take out a couple of the blocks of the trunk there and start the kind of flat section here 
and then it can arch around the top of the tunnel and it can seem like a reasonable size for a bunch of player sized people to travel through. I'm working with player scale a lot of the time here that seems to be the most sensible thing and uh, with player scale this mountain doesn't even seem like it would be all that big really but it's what we can work with given the build height of a Minecraft world. But I think it's entirely feasible that an entrance of this sort of size could exist at the base of the mountain. We'll probably end up reinforcing it here and there with a couple of beams and props that kind of thing almost make it look like a mine shaft of sorts which is definitely within our wheelhouse we built a couple of things like that in the series before and so i'm gonna work on building up the outsides of this cave a little bit naturalize it and build out a tunnel that probably comes to about here making it really obvious where the entrance to the mountainside is for for somebody who's exiting the ski village and looking for a place to get passage up the mountain so i'm gonna go away and do that I'll see you guys on the other side. So after a little bit more work, I think I've got the cave entrance roughed out a little bit. Could do with a little bit more detail here and there, but we've got at least one set of beams and props in here just to keep the whole thing looking kind of supported. And behind it, we now have a path that leads pretty much flat all the way to the ski lift, which is going to be that little section of scaffold over there and the redstone mechanism behind it. And I've just made this curved pathway roughly eight or nine blocks wide the entire way. So it feels like people could shuffle down here if they're already kind of wearing their skis. We're going to cover the entire thing in snow, of course. Or people could just carry their equipment up to the lift. It's going to be a couple of steps up the lift into where the main platform is going to take you to the top of the mountain. And... Around here, I've actually left a little bit of room alongside the cobblestone generator and alongside anything else that's built down here, which is not much, to be honest with you. And I think what we're going to do is set up a kind of boundary wall around the outside here. Not all made of blocks, probably some slabs and stuff here and there. And then three or four blocks behind that is going to be the room we have to work with building some crystals out of colourful materials that's going to make this place feel a lot brighter. We'll also be able to conceal some lighting behind that, so hopefully we will have to do less lighting of the path around here, because if we put snow layers down, they're going to melt if they come into too close contact with light sources, until, of course, the nether update arrives and we get those soul fire lanterns and torches that have a lower light level that does not melt snow and there is some stuff we could do before that we can uh, bury a couple of lights a couple of blocks down so that they don't have a strong enough light level on the surface to melt the snow hide them behind glass that kind of thing so that the lighting still shines through there's a few different options here but i think it'd be kind of cool once we get that blue fire to actually incorporate some of it in this project and that might have to happen a little bit later on of course because i don't know exactly when the nether update is going to come out but that'll be a nice little tweak that we can add to this area once the update rolls around and if we revisit the mountain area at that point so i think what i'm going to do is outline the path around here build outwards three or four blocks like I've done here and then we're going to head back to Founders Forge and we're going to get some materials that we will need to build up some of these crystals. So after a little bit of crafting and a little bit of converting here over at Founders Forge I have a shulker box here stacked full of colourful concrete materials both the hard concrete and the concrete powder because we are going to be making some nice colourful crystals to decorate this cave. Not only that, but I have a shulker box here with glass and blocks for illumination, plus a couple of extra blocks for flavour, namely the honey blocks and the slime blocks, which I think are going to provide an interesting bit of textural variation to some of these crystals I want to make. Not only that, but over here we have half a stack of each of the ore blocks I plan on using. Now, of course, there is a seventh ore block we could be using, which is coal ore, but I don't really feel like using that in this i'm not making black crystals instead we're going to be making uh kind of orangey crystals with the iron ore yellow crystals with the gold and then blue is obviously going to correspond to lapis lazuli and diamond we have emerald ore being the green and redstone being the red i think this is going to turn out really really nicely in fact i've been putting together a few little tests of these crystals in my creative test flat world and i think that's going to be a lot of fun in this little cave. And I say little cave, but this is actually kind of a big cave now. I've gone ahead and built up all of this. This is the kind of thing that you might expect to be hollowed out from a solid chunk of rock, but instead I've actually gone ahead and built a cave structure inside the mountain here myself, because the rest of this was previously, of course, incredibly hollow. And so now this pathway leads all the way to the ski lift and we have a cave structure taking shape around it. I am going to have to light up the place though and that's kind of why 
The lighting blocks are here to begin with. We've got a couple of places like this where zombies and creepers can spawn, and I would really rather not that they fall on my skiers when they line up their way into this mountain. So around either side here, we're going to be concealing lighting blocks among these crystals, and I'm going to put together a couple of examples here of how I expect these crystal structures to form from the ceiling and the floor of the cave, as well as maybe a couple popping out from the walls here and there. We're going to start over here on the left-hand side, and I think we'll start out with a little iron based crystal so we're going to be using some orange concrete powder some glass honey blocks and stuff like that we're going to grab one of the iron ore blocks or maybe one or two iron ore blocks and we're also going to be using some stone around the outside as decoration some stone slabs and full blocks maybe a stair here and there as well I think that's going to work out pretty well and I think we'll probably tuck a couple of blocks of glowstone in here so that we can take out some of these torches and conceal the light underneath so the lighting is going to come from the floor here and that's going to be the most effective way of lighting this up and mob spawn proofing it so we can probably take out the torches in the nearby vicinity although we'll probably conceal a few of those here and there in the walls as well. And I think we're going to start out with a couple of these blocks towards the bottom, the more solid kind of blocks here and add some concrete powder on top of those and then some glass on top of that. Now I want to make sure that a lot of these are of varying lengths like that so we'll throw in a honey block which of course I can't jump up and down on but yeah I think something like this is going to look nice for a little color combo. We'll pop a couple of glass blocks around the outside here as well. Maybe kind of tinker with the structure a little bit until we feel like we've got something that looks right and I think maybe we'll put another one of these honey blocks around the back like that and that's looking a little bit square actually so maybe we'll just leave one honey block there we could also even include glass panes if you want to get a little bit more detailed with it and have kind of spikier sections that look a little bit flatter but yeah that's the kind of thing i'm going for really and then around the outside of this we could probably lower the barrier here so that you can see a little bit more around the outside like that we can tuck in a couple of iron blocks around the base here some iron ore blocks add another one around the back here with a little bit more crystal formed around it and yeah it's weird but the iron texture here is that kind of like peachy coral kind of pink and i feel like that works best in combination with the the orange we've got going on here so maybe one more iron block tucked in there and it feels like a crystalline formation growing up out of the ground with the iron block there as a detail block to support it that's not bad. That's not bad. I like that one. Let's move on to maybe a diamond block formation kind of hanging down from the ceiling. And I like having some really nice color contrasts here and using complementary colors, which unlike how the name sounds is actually kind of the opposite color on a color wheel. So let's throw in some cyan and some light blue, maybe grab the concretes of those as well. And we'll do a diamond ore one next to that. Who would have thought we'd be building with diamond ore at some point in this series, but it's actually going to look really, really nice over here. I think what we'll actually do is have this coming down from an area of the ceiling where maybe it hangs down a little bit further. All of this stuff is kind of placeholder for now. We can tinker with it as much as we want, and I think it'd be really fun to have a section here with diamond ore kind of cascading down from the ceiling a little bit and work it into this sort of stalactite style thing let's throw a diamond ore in there for example let's pop one there and maybe one around the back here and then we can put some cyan glass in front of that and maybe even put a sea lantern back here to illuminate this entire thing from the top down there we go naturally the problem we're going to run into here is that concrete powder is affected by gravity and you can't place it out there in the world unless you've got something underneath it we could use string to hold that stuff up but personally i still notice string hanging down there even if it looks fairly transparent from a distance so instead i think we're going to be smart about how we construct these things and put a couple of these solid concrete blocks or glass blocks underneath where I expect to place the concrete powder. So we'll have one of those maybe coming out here like so, so we can put some concrete powder on top of that. Maybe we'll mix up the light blue and the cyan here. So if I place that on top of there, yep, that's going to look like it'll hang down a little bit. And then underneath that, we can place some cyan stained glass to complete the crystal image. And yeah, that's starting to look like a set of crystals coming down from the ceiling. We can maybe expand it out to one side a little bit and make sure this feels connected at the back here, maybe by a stone slab or something like that. We can add that for 
a little bit of detail. And speaking of detail, of course, it will help if we can get a few more of these stone slabs around the area, which will definitely make it look a little bit more natural. So it's less squared off. The cave wall formation can have a little bit more variety to it. I think that's going to look a little bit nicer and a little bit more natural. And to give the full effect, I'm gonna knock out a few more of the torches in this area so that we can see what this would look like alongside here if it was just the colored glass glowing in the light here and i think that's going to look quite nice and atmospheric yeah like especially around here there's a few more shadows in the background that really make these pop out as a contrast and if you wanted that effect if you just wanted to have these kind of neon things shining out here and very little else lighting up the area you could of course slab off the rest of the floor back here to make sure that it was spawn proof or alternatively put down some other kind of spawn proofing stuff but i really think it's going to be better off with slabs around here obviously you lose the effect of having all blocks around there but if you pop those up one block and put a slab on top of them that's equally worthwhile doing there you go like that just pop the block up one have a slab on top of that and while you've got some lighting coming from the glowstone on this side so you don't have to floor the entire thing with slabs it just helps to spawn proof a couple of these areas because as you can hear this area is a bit of a spawning ground right now and considering that we don't have the kind of ray traced light effects that you've seen in the minecraft rtx video i made the other day you can still have have effects like this where the color the colored light is sort of implied like it's sort of implied that this stuff is glowing even if it isn't glowing with the blue light of the ore blocks and the glass panes out here and the colored light sources don't really emit anything other than this kind of general white light i still feel like you can work in colorful effects like this and it will really enhance a build where otherwise it's kind of a solid gray block so i'm going to spend a little bit of time time lapsing some more of these because we have a lot of resources to work with here i brought the whole shebang in terms of colors and i feel like we can create some pretty special effects around here with the right application of stone and so forth we also need to finish up the tunnel at that end and tidy the whole thing up a little bit but i think we can do that in the form of a time lapse
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and this is looking a lot more beautiful. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Still needs a little bit of tweaking, but I'm running out of time for this episode. And this took a little bit longer than I expected it to. This is the result of a few hours work, really. Just fiddling with a few details and making sure it looked kind of nice. I like the variety of color. It definitely makes this area feel a lot more colorful once you step inside this cave, considering that outside it is mostly white, this kind of dull, pale, bluish green. Same goes for the leaves here and then all of the grey stone around and the dirt. It just feels like we needed a pop of colour somewhere in this place and I have found a nice way to put it. So this whole area is actually two snow layers deep and the reason for two snow layers instead of just one is because that will actually block mob spawns. So I haven't had to put any lighting in the path here at all and the crystals from the side can kind of shine their light outwards. We are still going to get a few mob spawnable spaces here and there, especially along these kind of rails. So I might put in a few concealed light sources just behind the barriers here, as long as they aren't going to shine their light too far over and uh, melt some of the snow layers, which won't melt into water or anything like that. They will just disappear in the way that they would if you put a torch down. But I would still prefer to keep most of this stuff intact because I like the illusion of it. I like the fact that we have a snowy path through here, which would probably be artificially created if we're thinking about this as being a normal ski resort. It's either going to be trod in from the outside or this is going to be an area where the skiers can just kind of shuffle through with their poles, getting to the ski lift and then take their gear off and ascend the mountain. We still have a large open cavern space at the end of this, which I'm going to develop into something a little bit different. I think I might put in some kind of like frozen lake feature or something in here, something different to look at once you've walked through this really colorful section and around the corner. I'm thinking a lot about sight lines and the way I want to structure this area from a visual perspective and just kind of play around with elements like that, uh, adjusting the player's view. Might even leave some areas of this open uh, if, the, if I can mob proof them at least so I can make them a little bit safer just so you can see the vastness of the cavern that you step out into. I feel like something about that still feels fairly impressive and if we aren't going to work on a dwarf base quite at this second I feel like it is still fun to incorporate that stuff elsewhere. Maybe give some hints about the fact that there's a giant redstone contraption around here and of course yes I do need to fix the ski lift which I'll be doing off camera between episodes but some of you might be wondering why waste all of these resources why waste all of this diamond ore and emerald ore and lapis and redstone and all of this good stuff on a project like this and the answer really is that that stuff becomes much less valuable once you've been playing the game for this long and once you have established a fairly decent routine of the mechanics of the game for example right now the armor i'm wearing i've been wearing for I don't know how many episodes at this point, probably since the Wither episode where I lost my original armor, but I've only ever really had two sets of diamond armor in this entire run, and I've been playing in this world for nearly two years. Coming up on this July is the two-year anniversary of the Survival Guide, and it has been a long time since I've actually had to use diamonds for anything. I've talked about this in previous episodes of the show, but... Once you get mending on your tools and once you have a decent backup, so once you are trading with villagers even, like I am in my Skyblock world, you start to reevaluate exactly what diamonds are worth. And for me, I feel like right now it is worth more for me to put them into a project like this where I can use the ore blocks themselves in an interesting way and combine them to make this lovely rainbow effect of all of the different blocks in this cave. It is more valuable to me than to break them down into diamonds which are just going to sit there. This is a single player world. I don't have any kind of economy. I'm not trading with other players. I don't have to worry about whether or not I have enough diamonds. I definitely have enough diamonds. In fact, I'm fairly certain the diamonds I have back in my diamond chest at Founders Forge have been there for a long time and have really not changed all that much. I've been using diamonds for beacons here and there as well, but even those... I just don't feel like I need to worry about losing them. However, here I think using ore blocks like this feels like a creative touch. It feels unusual and it feels like that's going to draw the player's eye in a little bit more. Hopefully it drew you to this video a little bit as well, seeing that I was building with these precious blocks in the thumbnail or the title of the video. And hopefully it gives you a little bit of pause for thought, reevaluating what is useful about these blocks, especially in the case of emerald ore. Emerald ore is one of those blocks which, for me, has always carried more value in the ore block form than it did 
if you break it down using fortune because you can get an infinite amount of emeralds just by trading with villagers. I have not got any of the emeralds that I have in my storage from uh, fortuning emerald ore or breaking it down in any way. Instead, it's so much nicer to keep those blocks around because they look so unique and use them for projects like this. Emerald ore is one of my favorite blocks in the game for that reason, and it's kind of the reason I wanted to do something like this. I hope you guys enjoyed this little crystal cave build. I'm sure we'll be able to do more stuff like this in the future, and I'll get another look at this project in future when I've been able to tidy up that cave at the end. But for now, leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.